hey i said that i'd make an epoxy granite video so here it is um this is my main casting which is entirely epoxy granite and so i'm just going to go through my process of how i made it for my aggregate i bought play sand tube sand and river gravel play sand for my small aggregate tube sand for the small rocks in it that make up my middle two sizes and half inch river gravel which gave me my largest size once i sorted out my grain sizes i washed them this removes any dirt, oil, and fine dust that I don't want in the final product. Even if you don't wash your aggregate, it's essential to have it completely dry before the epoxy granite process, so you have to cook your rocks. I bought 5 gallon buckets to store my dry, clean aggregate in before I used it. I then made my mold out of a sheet of MDF. MDF is great because it's a smooth, hard surface, and it's easy to work with and cheap. Um, you want to spend some extra time on your mold. It ends up being wildly worth it because it's much easier to change the mold than to change the epoxy granite after it's cast. My two rail inserts in the mold right there have bolts that go through them that will be cast into the epoxy granite. They also go through the bottom of the mold to hold the steel flat in place, so that way I have to do less flattening after the fact. For mold release, you just need paste wax like for restoring furniture. This was used without paste wax and you can see how well that worked. Once your mold is done, you need a vibration table. I don't have a great photo of it and it's disassembled now, but it's basically a rigid steel platform. It's got sandbags holding one end down and the other end has springs underneath it, the right end in this picture. The right end also has a motor with an eccentric weight and it spins at 3600 RPM which gives you vibration at about 60 Hz. The eccentric weight can be really simple. I just used a scrap of steel with a hole drilled into it for the motor axle and another hole drilled into the side for a little set screw to hold it in place. What everyone was asking about, here's the formula that I used. Rotary SMP sent me a excellent calculator that I can try to maybe put in the description of this video or something. That's how I got these weights for each grain size. Once you have your formula, your aggregates are ready and your vibration table is ready, you can start making a whole bunch of uh, samples just to clean up your formula and make sure you have something that works for you. You can see I've got a whole bunch of my sample pieces here and I just kept making samples until I was sure I had a formula that worked. A quick example of what not to do, here I am trying to vibrate a sample using a reciprocating saw. It is so much better to just use a motor and vibrate it hard with a vibration table at the right frequency, the difference in results will be huge. This is footage of me putting the epoxy granite in my actual mold. The epoxy granite in the bucket that I mixed in feels like barely damp rocks and sand. You can just barely compact it into a snowball shape in your hands without it breaking apart. Once I vibrate it at the correct frequency, so much air comes out of it that it actually has some excess epoxy that sits on top as a skin. This sample is starting to show the pure epoxy skin. Now jumping back to the final casting, this is my main casting after I placed all the epoxy granite and it started to cure just a little bit. Um, I just put it on this wheeled cart so I could move it around in the meantime. I gave the mold about a week to cure and then started popping off the side pieces. Right here you can see how useful the paste wax is because that MDF sheet came off in a few hammer hits in a single piece. I cast my mold upside down so this is the bottom of my mold, the top of my lathe. You can see my steel inserts with those bolts sticking through them. Those bolts used to hold the steel inserts down to the bottom of the mold but now I just need to cut them off. A few quick cuts with the angle grinder and we're good to go. My headstock casting was a lot more complicated as you can see, with a lot more fine details to, to cover in epoxy granite, I actually had to use a slightly higher epoxy content in order to not have any air bubbles. Hopefully that answers the bulk of the questions about my epoxy granite process. I can answer any other questions in the comments and I'll try to post any other info in the description of this video. 
Um, if you have any other questions or if there's anything else I can fill in, uh, just let me know and I'll try, try to do my best to answer it. Thanks so much for watching.